In this video, we're going to look at React Cell Renderers in AG Grid. That's a way of allowing you to put your own React component inside a cell. We'll start with this AG Grid React application on the left hand side. You'll see that we have some row data, some column defs, and a default call def bound into the grid. We're also loading some data from a server. And on the right hand side, we can see our application running. We will start by creating a cell renderer functional component up here. And we'll configure the athlete column to use this simple comp using the cell renderer attribute on the column definition. And hit save. The athlete column is now showing hello world. That's because we've configured the athlete column here with a cell renderer. And we've configured it to use the simple comp, which I have here defined to print hello world. So that's not very useful because we don't want the same thing printed in each column. So let's have a look at what's inside the params pass to our cell renderer. I'm printing the params to the console. Let's open up our dev console here. We can see that it's printed once for each row. Let's just open up one of them and we can see all this good stuff that's provided to us. If you want to know what all these are, check out the documentation. I'll just bring your attention to the value here. And this is the value that should be displayed inside that cell. We'll close down the console and get a simple comp to print out the value. Now on the right hand side, we can see that the value is being displayed in the column, which is what it was like before. However, this time we're using our simple comp to display the value. So let's have some fun with our simple comp and make it a bit more exciting. My component now has two buttons and each of the button has a listener attached to it. All of these buttons now appear on every cell that's using the simple comp. Clicking on the button here with Alicia Coots, I can see the pop-up appears and it prints the name which I picked up from the p.value. It's probably needless to say that this here is a full React comp. You can do whatever you want in here. The grid isn't going to restrict you. So whatever logic or DOM you want to put inside the grid, you can do it here using React. Let's have a closer look at the column definition. Right now, it's used for exactly one column, which is the athlete one. Let's also put it onto age and country. We can see now that the cell render is used on the age and the country columns. Or let's take it off. We'll just control Z. And instead of putting it at the individual column level, we can put it down at the default column level. And that means that the cell render will get used across all columns. Maybe there's one column where we don't want it to get used. We can override the default here and put in null to say don't use any cell renderer. Now I'll just put this back to the way it was with the cell renderer just on one column. And I'm going to talk about cell renderer params. I'm going to change the simple comp so it only has one button and I'm going to get what's displayed inside the button to come from a params. And now I'll set button text as a parameter down where the cell render is configured for the column. Equals is now displayed inside the athlete column inside the button. And let's do it for another column as well. But in this column, instead of equals, let's put in the hash sign. The simple comp is now used in two places, in the athlete column and the age column, but it's configured a bit differently here. It's showing equals in the button text, and here it's showing hash for the button text. Now let me remove the params because I want to tidy the code up before showing you something else. This component is outside of the column definition, which is great and that's what you'll probably do most of the time. But if you're just hacking the grid together for some test application, you could just put the component directly in here and get it to return back some JSX. We now have ages in bold inside the age column. We can also have a class component. Let me just do one here really quickly to show you that.
we now have two components. Push component is a functional component and pull component is a class-based component. And they're both configured into the grid in the same way. You can use functional or class components in your grid. The grid will work with both. So right now we've got three columns with components. We've got the push comp here, we've got an inline comp here, and we've got the pull comp there. But what if we wanted to use two components inside the same column, a different component for each row based on the data? Well, you would achieve that using a cell renderer selector. Let me show you. This is the selector function. It's provided instead of a cell renderer. The selector function gets params. The values inside here are actually the same values that you get as the props inside your cell renderer. We're looking at the value, and if the value is 2000, we will then use the component push comp. And if the value is 2004, then we'll use the pull comp. And you can see that here underneath the year column, wherever we have 2004, we've got pull, and wherever we have got 2000, we've got push. The return type here is an object. Whatever we specify for the component will be used as a cell renderer. So this property here is equivalent to the cell renderer property. We can also specify params, and we could put params in here, and those params would be used instead of cell renderer params for that particular row for that column. And that's everything I wanted to go through in this video of getting started with cell renderers inside AG Grid. We saw how to create a simple cell renderer using firstly a functional component and then a class-based component. We saw how to configure those on two columns. We also saw how to provide parameters to the individual cell renderers. And we saw how to use a cell renderer selector to specify a different cell renderer for each row. If you like what you saw, please place a comment, please share, tell your friends. If you don't, then I'm going to kill the bunny rabbit.